Hello, so welcome back to my channel. Um, so as you can tell, I had another baby. Um, my last video, I believe I was pregnant. And now he is almost, oh, he is actually three months old. So it's been a while. I have done a birth video for all my kids. And of course I have to do one, even though it's extremely late. And he's not a newborn anymore. Now he's three months. Um, so he was born on April 9th at 7.22 a.m. And so now I will go into his birth story. He was three days late. So I was trying everything to get him out. I drank the teas. I did the evening primrose. I was using my breast pump to try and do labor. I was trying everything to get him out at like 37, 38 weeks. None of it worked. That's okay, he came when he was ready. Um, so, I'm late, it's past my due date. My due date was April 6th. I'm antsy, I'm uncomfortable, my belly was huge. By the way, through this video, I'll just post some photos um, of uh, the birth while I'm talking. So, on April 8th, the day before he was born, I wake up fine, everything's normal, I'm uncomfortable, I'm annoyed. <laughs> Um, I take a nap when Ari was napping and then I wake up around 3 because I felt a little crampy. It is April 8th and I think I'm in early labor. Um, I've been having contractions since 6, 3 p.m. They come and go, they're not consistent but they're strong. Um, yeah, trying to breathe through. Um, they have to be lasting a minute and every five minutes for an hour. Um, even though they were never like that with Avi. And with Ari, my water broke first, and which is rare. So, just trying to deal. Um, I'm just trying to relax as much as possible because when it starts, it's going to be crazy. Um, and it's going to be intense um, and not pleasant. Um, but it will be all worth it to finally meet the baby I've been carrying for the last nine months. I am overdue, by the way. I've never been this pregnant. I am right now, let's see. Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I am 40 weeks and two days. Um, I've, our last time Ari was born on the two days. So just breathing. So I'm like, okay, maybe this is the start of something. But I've been here before. I had Braxton Hicks. It never led to anything. So I, by the way, if you do not want to see see or hear about anything womanly or gross, you should leave this video now. Um, so I'm tracking my contraction. They are actually coming like 20-30 minutes, every 30 minutes. And then I go to the bathroom and I see that there's a little bit of a, a bloody show. I'm like, okay, but I've had this before, so maybe they regenerate, we'll see what happens. Chris asked me, do you think it's gonna, it's gonna happen tonight? I'm like, I don't know yet. So I go out through my day. I actually got an email from my midwife saying that if I, you know, uh, basically do schedule an ultrasound on Monday because he was overdue, um, they just wanted to make sure that everything was okay. And uh, I'm making dinner, I'm putting the kids to bed, I'm doing everything that I usually do just while also tracking every time I get a contraction. I also call my midwife around five in the afternoon and I tell her, by the way, I'm having contraction. She said, okay. Um, 
I will come by tomorrow. I'm like, okay. And so, you know, I just go ahead. Um, Chris asked me if she should get some things just in case. I say, yeah, sure, go to the store, get some fruit, get whatever you need. And especially because it was actually going to be raining the next day. So I was like, okay, yeah, just do that just in case. And I'm sorry, the contractions are starting to feel more intense. I am feeling it. I try to get some sleep just in case, but every time I wake up, um, but when, every time I get a contraction because it's getting painful and I even, I remember biting my hand um, from it because I was getting back labor, which I had it with Abby and I had it with this one. Back labor is the worst. The only labor that was, you know, okay, no, not real complaining, was ours. This was fast, it was great. Um, so, it's around 4 in the morning, I'm still going through all these contractions, all this pain, um, you know, uh, I've been texting my midwife, I keep tracking my contractions, they're coming 10 minutes, 5 minutes, some even sooner, because the rule is, like, when people have to go to the hospital, if your water breaks, go to the hospital. My water hasn't broken yet. Um, and, and then if it's every five minutes, for an hour, lasting a minute, then you go to the hospital or call your midwife in my case. And it said it a couple times to call, but I was like, okay, I'm just gonna wait, I'm gonna wait. The pain is still pretty intense. Uh, I can't sleep, I'm on my bed, like feeling like I'm dying, biting myself. I even took a comb because there's a, it's a pain method where you put a comb right here. So I was pressing a comb against my hands and um, eventually, I think it was around four in the morning, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take a bath. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna do it. And I run a bath. I'm trying to like ease the back pain because it's really painful. And at this point, I'm exhausted already just because I, been up, haven't slept, it's four in the morning. So I've been up almost 12 hours, you know, other than, you know, um, from, from that night, from the nap time. And I'm running in the bath, I'm like, and I feel nauseous. And the thing of my body, I know that when <laughs> I feel nauseous and I throw up, that's when it's go time. Every single one of my Labors with Abby and Ari, I've thrown up. So I'm by the bath. I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna throw up, I'm gonna throw up. And I obviously don't want to throw up in the bath. And my kid's little toilet is right next to me. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna throw up in this. And then I get out of the bath right after I throw up. I tell Chris, I'm calling the midwife. And it's like 5.30. And I call her. I said, look, my contractions, are coming close, I just threw up, it's time. I, I can tell that she was asleep, and I call her, um, and she's like, okay, I'm on my way. And then I, I call my doula, but she didn't answer. And then eventually I text her, I was like, by the way, uh, it's go time, um, and <laughs> Um, it's go time, the midwife is on the way. And so, the midwife gets here, she checks me, she's like, you're fully dilated. She calls her midwife assistant, we wait a little bit, she asks me, um, you know, some questions, she checks his heart rate, everything was fine, um, you know, my body's just doing what it has to do, and, um, um, let me think. What else happened? Do you remember? No? You're still inside. <laughs> um, and then, um, so they come. I My water hasn't broken yet. They come. Oh, by the time my midwife came and she checked me, I was fully dilated. I was 10 centimeters, so it was really time. Um, I think this was like the latest that I ever called a midwife to come 
check on me. You know, because I did it on my own, really. I labored at home on my own. I, and then when I knew that it was really go time, I called. And so by the time she came and she checked me, I was ready to go. Um, my water has been broken, so I start to push. You know, pushing slowly, taking my time. Um, just pushing whenever I feel contraction. And then I hear broop while I'm pushing, which is a very strange sensation just having it break while I'm pushing because I never had that before. Um, Abby, my, Abby, they broke my, um, my midwife broke my water just to speed things along. And then with Ari, my, it broke on its own first before contraction. And then this one was while I was pushing that my water broke. And so I'm pushing, I'm pushing, it hurts. I'm exhausted. It's painful, you know, my, especially on my back, like for, I was having Chris rub my back and um, rub my legs. I felt shaky. Um, my doula was scanning me because I also felt hot. Because, um, you know, I mean, it's a lot of work to bring a human out. <laughs> um, it's worth it, but it's hard. And I remember. Um, on, this, on the wall, I have pictures of his ultrasound. Um, that is where, also next to the bassinet. So I. What? Wait. Yes, we're talking about you. Okay, so this is part two of Axel's birth story. Uh, because I have three kids, and then it's uh, hard to finish things. Um, <laughs> So I was pushing, I was pushing, I was pushing. There was a point where I was like laying down. <laughs> um, I was pushing in different positions. Um, it was a lot of work. <laughs> um, and then he was finally born at 7.22 in the morning. A beautiful baby boy, Axel Marcel Mitchell. That is my son's name. He was born at 8 pounds and 21 inches? No, 20 and a half inches. Um, and my midwife helped after he was born. My midwife, you know, put him on my chest. And then I delivered my placenta. And my midwife put my placenta in a bag. And literally, like, it was next to me after, like, I delivered for like 20 minutes, probably, until. And then I have a video of Chris. Um, beautiful video though. Once they clean, you know, he was laying on my chest. I nursed him right away, and then eventually um, they did the exam. But that's okay. Um, that's both all my. I think, I think Abby. No, Abby peed, and I think Ari pooped on me as well. So it's what it is. <laughs> um, and then after they cut the cord and everything, my midwife helped me to the bathroom to try to pee, um, and I. She asked me. I didn't really feel like peeing. I was like. Uh, Nothing. And then she told me, she gave me strict instructions not to pick up my baby or the older kids, uh, not to bend just in case because I was, you know, still losing blood. Um, and this, yeah, so it was a lot. It was beautiful and I'm so grateful. And he is now three months, which is not newborn anymore. But 
the three months were wonderful. I felt, I think as a third time mother, I felt less stressed and I think I also felt like I wanted to cherish the newborn stage. Like if I could go back to the newborn stage right now, I would. For me, it was so easy. Like compared to having a toddler, the newborn stage is so easy. Like all you do is pick them up, breastfeed. Yes, you don't sleep as well. But also, I'd rather have newborn tired than pregnancy tired. Because pregnancy tired was a whole other level, especially with two other kids. If you hear the TDP, sorry about that. My son is watching Ratatouille. Um, and my other one is watching his tablet on the floor. Um, but yeah. Um, I'm not sure what else to say. I'm thinking. <laughs> um, but yeah, the three months was happening wonderful with him. He is the best baby ever. I'm also going to add photos, as I said, and videos of the first few days. But Axel is the perfect addition to our little family, and I. I am very proud of my body and grateful that I have been able to have three home births with all three of my kids. This is our first American baby. They're all American, it's just this one was born in America rather than born somewhere else, not in, not in Haiti. Um, to finish this video, I did want to add one thing that I forgot to mention. So obviously after I gave birth to Axel, I was recovering and Ari, the wild child he was, he was mostly with his dad or doing other things, but Abby stayed with me the whole day. And then later on, we asked the grandparents to come pick them up just to give us a little break and so we could sleep because we hadn't slept at all. Uh, and we were both exhausted. And then um, their grandfather picked them up to take them uh, to the house and I slept in the bed with a baby and Chris slept on an air mattress in the living room just so he was close by but not too close to the baby just because you know bed sharing um, and actually I'm still kind of co-sleeping with a baby he does have a bassinet which he has still been using he is going to transition soon to a floor bed because we don't do cribs and that is all so thank you so much for your patience on this video and thank you for watching if you are watching that is my third home birth video and if you have any suggestions of other videos you would like to see let me know comment below please like this video share it thank you